that's the way to make a dictatorship fall, is make it act like a dictatorship. So if we act right now, there's no reason we can't defeat this. That's and right. the thing about it is, it's the only way we can do this. The, the alternative to ignoring this, to saying oh, it doesn't exist, is unthinkable. Yeah. So just think about, you know, even the simple things, like think about your kids, you know, if you've got kids, or think about anything like that, you know, it's, it's you know, it might sound cliche, but it's only then you actually enjoy life when you're thinking about other people by, besides yourself. And... Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I want to ask you guys as well. Have you been uh, so? Have you been sending out copies of the paper yet? And uh, w when do you hope to have the second one uh, uh, coming out? If if it, if indeed uh, you can fund a second printing of this paper? Yes, we're actually uh, going to print um, this weekend, Henrik, and early next week we'll we'll be out on the streets handing them out. We're also going to offer the paper on the website on sovereignindependent.com or .org. And people can download it and you know bring it to the printers. They can you know print it on A3, even A4. We've tested it; uh, it's actually very legible on A4. And um, or they can actually go and you know get thousands of copies printed for relatively cheap in you know all you know countries around Europe. So if they want to hand out this paper, um, obviously a lot of it is to do with Ireland, uh, simply because you know it's be, it's been put out to the Irish people. There is stuff that relates to the rest of Europe and really explains the Lisbon Treaty. But we have information about swine flu and about the vaccine and Baxter. And, you know, we have information about fluoride. Ireland is actually one of the only countries still to have fluoride in their water. Yeah. And we have, you know, doctors writing for us. We have, um, you know, about the fisheries. We have a, a number of different articles that will really explain, you know, all the different corruption and what is wrong with with Ireland and Europe and you know what needs to be changed around Europe. I think it's a, oh, sorry. Uh, I think it's important not only for people about just this vote, but to realise that you know without a vote we're in the fight of our lives and really just to get people thinking, get people like don't think the way we are. Go find your own answers, but just don't listen to corporate media. Uh, you mentioned that you kind of have the economic uh, issue kind of as a, as a prominent featured one in your paper. Do you have info about how much money the EU actually costs and, and about all the frauds? There have been multiple exposures in German television, for instance, about the allowance fraud that takes place by a lot of the MEPs. Do you have stuff like that in the paper as well? We do, we do indeed, Henrik. And um, yeah, we're pointing out to people that I think it's about a, a million euros a day goes missing within the EU and that they've never actually balanced the budget. And uh, we, you know, we need to. We're really pointing that out to people that, you know, especially are concerned about the economy and about, you know, where our money and everybody's money around Europe is going and all the taxpayers. And we've a number of, you know, bailouts happening for banks in Ireland at the moment. And uh, we need to, you know, we're trying to point out to people that they're putting tax on, you know, every child that hasn't even been born yet is getting, you know. 20,000 euros tax put on their head just as they're born and you know everybody is going to face this like we even think it's bad in the United States with like something like 24 trillion dollars being pumped into the system over there hmm. and they're you know waiting on hyperinflation practically but the thing about over here we've got like guarantees on banks in Eastern Europe across Europe something like 24 trillion if you're going by the Daily Telegraph so you know basically being part of Europe has really hindered everybody's economy so we've got to get rid of this notion where you're a big country, you're going to prosper. You know, some of the most wealthiest countries in the world are small, trade with other countries, and, you know, their people are looked after. You know, when you kind of, when you centralize power the way it is happening in Europe, the elites benefit, and nobody else does. Yeah, that's right. And, and yeah, go ahead. Uh, and uh, another thing, Henrik, like um, a lot of people... You know, they you know they tend to because people advocate a no vote. They tend to say you know you're eurosceptic. We're not eurosceptic. We actually you know believe in Europe, want to be part of Europe, um, agree with the trade, but we do not agree with a constitution that overrides our own constitution. And um, you know we don't mind being European citizens, but we're Irish citizens first, and we want to stick with our own constitution that gives us our rights. Um, we don't want to hand off, you know, our powers to European elites that none of us elected, any of us in Europe didn't elect. And uh, we, we don't see a problem with Europe as long as it's a, you know, free trade and everything out in the open. 
Yes. Um, I want to ask you guys, if, if we have 10,000 people listening to this show that would be donating one euro each, that's nothing individually, you guys will have around 10,000 euros. What would you do with that money and how could you reach people with that, with that uh, amount of money? With 10,000 euros, Hendrik, we could get another 100,000 to 120,000 copies of the paper and um, that's exactly what we do. Any donations that we've received, which I really have to say thank you to everybody across Europe and in Ireland for you know, all this money being donated. It really is going to a good cause. And uh, every penny that is raised is going into the printing of the paper. Um, we, we were saying printing and distribution, but we have plenty of volunteers that will you know, work for nothing and distribute the paper for us. So every single penny we get, including our own wages, Henrik, I must stress that we've, yeah, you know, we're all pumping money we've, into this We've all put in, you know, hundreds ourselves, and um, every penny we can raise is being put in. Now, we actually have um, a bit of a fundraiser. We have uh, Scott Tips, who um, is basically the editor of Health Freedom News, and he's the president and legal counsel for the NHF. Yes. Uh, he's, uh, he, he's coming over to do a talk on Codex Alimentarius, and which is, you know, which Ireland and the rest of the world is going to have to face December um, this year. And um, he's coming over to talk to all the different health shops and chemists. And uh, we have an event going on, which is we're going to have the Sovereign Independent there to hand out to these people and uh, give them a number of copies to give out to, you know, everybody in the in the health industry across Ireland. So we have a fundraiser happening as well, which will allow us to print a second edition uh, of the same paper, but uh, it'll be a second run as such. And um, we have a number of things going on. And, you know, just the more money we raise, the more papers we put out, um, you know, half, half a million copies is our target, and that will be a massive impact. It would be great if we can surpass that. That would be even, you know, more than we could dream for. That's yeah. the one thing, you know, like, we were, none, of, none of this money would go into administrative costs. Everything would go towards the paper. Yeah. Um, not a single cent would be wasted or anything else. Um, even some more money's gone in, as, um, as Jason as Simon said. Like, yeah, every single cent would go towards this. And think about the impact this would have on somebody. Because a lot of people, you know, were, you know, I learned about the New World Order through the Internet. A lot of people really probably won't even go on a website or think if they see something on a website, it's not real. Yeah. But if they see this action on the ground, they see something stirring, and they see, you know, a newspaper, and they see people like Scott Tips, you know, writing for this, and Anthony, Anthony Coughlin, you know, important people like that, you know, people with great backgrounds writing about things like this. Yes. You, people are going to have to stand up and take notice, you know. You know, these people have something to say, take it on board, and, we, we, you know, the whole cliche, we have to wake up and just kind of see where, where our country's going. Absolutely. More people should, uh, again, just go over there and show, from, from the rest of the European countries, should go over there and just show what they think about this and, and uh, you know, help to give, uh, provide the right information to the Irish people. And um, I also want to ask you guys if, you can, if you're hooking up with other organizations right, and, and groups right now that have shared the similar interests as you do, or is there some kind of schism or division here that is tricky to bypass, or, or can you, do you feel that you pretty much can unite under getting a, a no vote at this point? Yeah, we've been, I've actually attended a number of different meetings, um, like the, the Irish anti-war movement, and they've written an article for, you know, for the paper, and there's a No to Lisbon group, and they've written for the paper. It's actually a collaboration of, you know, all sorts of groups, although the Truth Coalition are the ones putting out the paper, we have some very, very respectable groups and people writing for the paper and that have put in articles that are absolutely fantastic. As I said, we've got a doctor from, you know, he's a professor and teaches in one of our head colleges in Dublin. It's actually Trinity College. And he's wrote an article about fluoride and, you know, about there's another article from another doctor explaining about uh, the propaganda fear and, you know, don't be afraid and, you know, there's people that have wrote about the vac vaccinations for the swine flu and a number of different things. Like it really is a collaboration of groups and uh, we're supporting them as much as we can. There's another event taking place in Shannon to stop, you know, rendition flights coming in uh, through Shannon and flying out to Afghanistan and a number of countries. 
And, you know, we have proof of, of the date. There's plenty of groups down there taking pictures of the CIA planes. And, you know, there's a big, uh, there's a, a big uh, kind of meeting and protest taking place. I think it is the 13th of September in Shannon. And there's going to be uh, European media and world media basically 